the logic guy. You know, he's a doctor. Doctors work through logic. Doctors work in a scientific way. And Luke was always observing the logic behind it. The main logic is how do people relate to Jesus? You know, some of us, we think, we imagine God like an old man with a white beard, holding a stick, sitting on his throne, conquering the whole world. You know, some of us, we have these all these kind of different imaginations. But today, how are you imagining God? Jesus never wants you to stop glorifying his name. Hallelujah. There should be the joyful voice. There should be the joyful noise coming within your heart. The Spirit of God should spill out from your spirit, from your body, through the words, through your expression, through the mind that you have. How do we overcome problems in our life? By carrying a cross, just like how Jesus carried it on the Good Friday. Are you carrying your cross or are you running away from your cross? Is my question. Are you carrying your burden or are you running away from your burden? A lot can happen in a week. A lot can happen in a week. You know, today, the Christ is your king. The Christ is king over the city. Hail the king. Hallelujah. And it was a great, a great celebration, a great joy, and a great time. So, what is the story about Palm Sunday? Some people also call it as Passion Sunday. And, you know, from today onwards, the Holy Week starts. So, what is this all about? We find about Palm Sunday or Passion Sunday uh, or about this event uh, where Jesus was entering the city of uh, Jerusalem. Exactly on a Sunday, he was entering the city of Jerusalem. And we find all, this, all these evidences in the four Gospels of the Bible. In Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. So where all these four writers, they have written in their own unique ways, in their own unique narratives. And uh, today I want to bring down from the narrative of Luke, the doctor. You know, Luke was a brilliant guy where he used to put it all in a nice narrative form. And uh, John is the kind of guy who used to put it like a, you know, he used to take that story and this story and he used to take the principle of the story of which Jesus was teaching and he used to put it like a sandwich, you know. How a sandwich is, it is all layered together. That's how John does it. So they have their own narratives, but they all talk about the same thing. That is the beauty of it. They all talk about the same thing. They all talk about the entrance of Jesus Christ into Jerusalem. And according to the writing of Luke, you know, he has portrayed uh, Jesus in a very vast and exorbitant way where he was entering into Jerusalem. Now on this day, Jesus was moving from Galilee to Jerusalem. And before he goes to the city of Jerusalem, Jesus takes a pit stop and he sends his disciples uh, and he says, you know what, just go ahead and get a colt for me, get a donkey for me, uh, which is unridden. And there he, say, he gives two terms. One is, a, one is a baby donkey, which is a male, and another one is a, a one-year-old one to four-year-old donkey, according to uh, the Gospels, we find that. If we open our Bibles to Luke chapter 19, verse 30 onwards, we see this story. Luke, uh, verse 30 onwards. And verse 30, this word says, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here, is what Jesus says. Now I know, you know, many of us have heard a message just about the donkey over there. And today I'm not going to talk to you about the donkey, but today I'm going to talk about the angle and the approach of uh, Luke that he has towards Jesus. And Jesus had a little halt in one of these villages. And he sends his disciples to fetch an unridden donkey for him. And you, you can even find this in the Old Testament in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. It says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. So basically, the same act Jesus was doing, the same act, the same words have been prophesied uh, by Zechariah. And Luke mentions you know, uh, saying that there are a large part, there is a large part of people 
a huge gathering of people, including the disciples, they were a part of this welcoming of Jesus Christ into their uh, community, into their society. So we find the welcoming of Jesus again. Let's go down in verse 37. We see, when he came near the place where the roads go down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Now that is an interesting statement from Luke. You know, he say, when he came near to Jerusalem, where the road goes down to the Mount of Olives, you know, there, there's a, there are big mountains over there in Jerusalem and there is one big mountain, it's called the Mount of Olives and where all olive trees grow. And we, we, we find the writing over there saying the whole crowd of disciples, so that means the disciples were also there, an extended part of the disciples, it is not the 12 disciples that were with Jesus, but the extended part of disciples were there and also the community, the whole society was there and they began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles that they had seen which Jesus has made. And Jesus, he performed miracles as we know. And the people were praising God because this great prophet is coming from Galilee to enter the city and they thought, well, let us just praise God because this man of miracles is coming. Now you got to understand, they were looking at Jesus they, were, they heard about him, they have seen him do miracles and they are praising God for the miracles but they were not praising God for Jesus. There's a difference in that. Many of us, we like God because he does miracles. That is the reason why we praise God, we go to the church, we sing hallelujah, we sing hosanna, we come prepared for him. But my question is, are you like the community of disciples or are you like the 12 disciples who were close with Jesus? Because the disciples who were close with Jesus, I'm going to show you the angle that they are also coming from. And this is what they were praising with. They're saying, blessed is the king. If you find it in verse 38. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven, holy and glory in the highest. We find this writing about Luke, he doesn't mention as Jesus, but he mentions Jesus Christ as the king. Everybody say king. Now that's a totally different angle. And I know as of now, because uh, if you have been coming to our church for, for the past six months or one year, you already know the term called king. Because it's a kingdom and king reigns in a kingdom. It is not a president or a prime minister. And he says, just remind yourself just imagine yourself in Jerusalem among all these hundreds and thousands of people. And usually during this time, many pilgrims, they come to Jerusalem. They come to Jerusalem so that they can spend some time at the Wailing Wall and all that. They can see the temple which Solomon has, had built for them. And they can worship God during this season and they can go back after this season. It is like the Ramzan season for the Muslims, the same way all the Jews over there, they go towards the city of Jerusalem. As the pilgrim comes, people usually meet them and greet them with this greeting, saying, peace be upon you, the one who comes in the name of our God. You know, so this is the usual greeting. There's not a, great, there's not a, a unique greeting that they're given to Lord Jesus Christ. This is a general greeting that they uh, mention. So this also goes in with the proclamation of the angels. The angels also say, peace be upon you, the one who comes in the name of our God. You know, the same greeting we find common among all the fraternity of the kingdom of God. And, and this, is a, this is like welcoming a celebrity. You know, Jesus was not welcome like how we are usually welcomed, but Jesus was on a court and people were excited. Now you got to understand, why were people excited? They were not excited because he is Jesus the Lord. They were excited because of the miracles that, they perf that Jesus performs. The, because of the miracles, they thought that the Savior was coming to them. That is the reason why they were calling him Messiah. 
the reason why they were worshiping him is because of the miracles the great things that he was performing now if you observe if you observe luke over here luke doesn't mention the red carpets what what is the red carpet over there the clothes that the people were you know laying down the palms the flowers the the leaves that they were laying down luke doesn't mention all these things about the grand welcome even though he received it we find it in the other gospels so welcoming of jesus where you know people were holding were palms but luke was not mentioning that here luke was mentioning more about the people and what they are saying it is more about the people and what they are saying what does that mean luke was always more about the logic guy you know he is a doctor doctors work through logic doctors work in a scientific way and luke was always observing the logic behind it the main logic is how do people relate to jesus now today my question is how do you relate to god do you relate to god saying you're really big you're humongous you know some of us we think we imagine god like an old man with a white beard holding a stick sitting on his throne conquering the whole world you know some of us we have these all these kind of different imaginations but today how are you imagining god in your life are you imagining god just like how he is or are you imagining god in your own imagination my dear brothers and sisters people are welcoming jesus christ like a celebrity whenever we think of a celebrity a celebrity is never close to you you always regard him far beyond you that is the reason why you celebrate his life understand the reason why he is called celebrity so all the pop all the pomp and all the glory was there and people were shouting hosanna hosanna and you know hosanna the word hosanna means save us now the reason why they were saying hosanna is because this king who comes and by the time jesus came the term save us now became like a praise word you know there's a reason why we we even now we sing hosanna 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 in the highest so what i mean over here is Luke was mentioning more about the people and what they were saying. Now, how do you welcome Jesus Christ into your lives today? How do you welcome Jesus Christ into your lives? Is it only about the hip and the pop or is it also about your heart? Are you worshiping God from far off or are you worshiping God from your heart? Once you come to the Sunday morning Are you worshiping God only with your lips because of the miracles that he performs or do you have does God reside in you the word immanuel means im means inside man means man el means the lord sovereign is the lord sovereign residing inside your heart in this palm sunday or are you only about wearing white clothes and just coming with a happy face and saying hosanna 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 in the highest my dear brothers and sisters you know religion couldn't take that the pro, the the pharisees who were far you see they couldn't take all this pomp and the glory that jesus christ was receiving from all these people you know they even objected saying jesus why don't you control your disciples and just make them not go too wild you know is what the religion was saying in verse 39 we see some of the pharisees in the crowd said to jesus teacher rebuke your disciples we find the statement over there but jesus did not make them stop rather he let them shout joyfully what does that mean whenever you are happily and joyfully shouting and praising god you know Jesus never wants you to stop glorifying his name hallelujah there should be the joyful voice there should be the joyful noise 
coming within your heart in the morning i spoke you know that spillage should always be there the spirit of god should spill out from your spirit from your body from your through your through the words through your expression through the mind that you have my dear brothers and sisters jesus was coming towards the culmination of his whole life now this is what i want to draw your attention to in spite of this pop in spite of all the celebration that jesus was having around him jesus there was no mentioning about jesus that he was enjoying that time why was jesus not enjoying the time because he was coming towards the culmination of his whole life now the final stage the pinnacle of jesus was being set over here the whole message and the stage was being set towards jerusalem now even though people were able to celebrate the entry of the king jesus was not able to celebrate the entry of the king and also the 12 disciples you know why because the disciples the people who were close with jesus they knew what was happening for jesus they knew what was about to happen for jesus and the final stage for jesus was set on this sunday my dear brothers and sisters the people were applauding as jesus was coming on a donkey a humble animal a burden a beast of burden you know not only jesus even solomon when the king david decided that now i'm going to uh, give the reign to solomon solomon also sat on a donkey and he went into the city for all the people to receive him you know many many of the people many of us we always say you know jesus got on a humble humble donkey on a humble beast and all that no kings when they are incarnated before they are incarnated when they want to take a ride within the city that's when they get on a donkey that is the tradition of a king they get on a donkey because the donkey can carry a heavy weight and walk slowly a horse it can't walk slowly that is the reason why the king gets on a donkey before the prince gets on a donkey before he is incarnated as a king got it the donkey walks slow it doesn't walk fast like a horse this is the procedure during the incarnation process so when will the messiah come into our midst is what the people were thinking when will when will this king of glory come into our midst so we can celebrate him but jesus told the disciples what was about to happen jesus told the disciples they were jesus was the scenario before this was jesus was asking the disciples what do you think of me what do you think who i am who do you think i am and we find that statement where peter says you are the son of god my dear brothers and sisters now what do you think about jesus what do you think about Je- about jesus is jesus only about the miracles or e- is jesus really the son of god according to you do you really have a relationship with jesus this morning is what i want to ask and and when they heard about the miraculous prophet coming into this coming from galilee into jerusalem they were all filled with hope they were thinking let us get rid of these romans who are conquering us let us get rid of the slavery that we are bound by my dear brothers and sisters but they were not finding it ridiculous that the king was coming towards them and the very purpose of this king coming towards them he had a different purpose many of us we only think about the victory but we never think about the tribulation that you need to go through before the victory representing the kingdom of god jesus was entering into this city that is how the kingdom of god works from small to big everybody says small to big the word of the lord says your beginnings might be humble but your ending will be glorious hallelujah my dear brothers and sisters the people recognized 
Jesus as a king. But Jesus was not looking at himself as a king. Rather, he was looking at himself as the lamb that was being slaughtered. My dear brothers and sisters, God's people thought they had figured it out. But no, they have not figured it out. That was only a beginning for the end. My dear brothers and sisters, we try to bring God on our terms. Just like how the people were bringing God on their terms. The people were shouting and praising God, singing, Hosanna, Hosanna, glory to be, be to the highest. But Jesus was not celebrating at that moment. If we look in verse 41, we find, as he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it. Jesus Christ wept over it. You know, we always find the smallest uh, Bible verse in the Bible is Jesus wept. But we miss out this point where Jesus wept. Jesus wept two times. In two, two instances, we see Jesus wept. And this is the second time, the only other time where we see Jesus weeping in the Bible. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, the other instance was near the tomb where Jesus wept while James was in the tomb. Now, Let's go to verse 42 and we find and said, if you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. Are you able to understand that statement? Jesus knew the reason why he was coming to Jerusalem. He knew he was being, he was ready to be slaughtered. But the people didn't know that. That is the reason why Jesus gave this statement. He said, now it is hidden from your eyes that I am going to be slaughtered. You don't, you have no clue. You don't have any idea what today means. The days will come upon you where your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave, you, leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus was able to see the fate, what would happen the next coming Sunday. The only way for people to get their peace was through the persecution and the slaughtering of the Lamb of God, our Messiah. The only way for people to get their peace was through the perfect sacrifice through the sacrificial lamb that is Jesus Christ. And the killing of Messiah was really needed in order for God to establish the permanent peace upon earth. Now what was, the all, what was all the jubila jubilation and the, and the celebration about? What is all this vibrant and the jubilant environment about? That was for the people. But that jubilation was not for Jesus. The pomp and the show, Jesus was not really enjoying it. Many of us, we always think, Jesus enjoys a great show. No, my dear brothers, might not be true. Jesus actually enjoys what you think about him in your heart. And if that shows the pomp and the jubilation, God really enjoys that. But if it is only about the celebration and never about the reason for the celebration, God never really enjoys about that. How do we overcome troubles in our life? By carrying a cross, just like how Jesus carried it on this day, on the next Good Friday. Are you carrying your cross or are you running away from your cross is my question towards you. Are you carrying your burden or are you running away from your burden today? My dear brothers and sisters, a lot can happen in a week. A lot can happen in a week. This Sunday, the exact, I'm also going to give you the date. 30, 33 AD is the year and exactly 1991 years back from this day, 
exactly 1991 years back on this day on sunday the march 29th is when jesus christ was walking into jerusalem he he was walking into jerusalem jesus enters jerusalem hailed as the king cheered by the crowds with palms and with exaltation and people were saying let us celebrate this celebrity on monday march 30th jesus turned over the tables of the money changers at the temple calling out all their corrupt practices on on april 1st the wednesday religious people they plot to kill jesus on thursday the april 2nd jesus celebrates a quiet dinner with his disciples that is where we got the communion the lord's communion from and later that night he was betrayed by judas at the garden of gethsemane he was beaten down and sentenced to death by pilot as the le- religious leaders they wanted him crucified remember it is the religion which wanted him to be crucified it is not the roman empire it is the religion which couldn't take jesus into your lives it is not the kingdom of god today i want to ask a question to you religion judges the kingdom of god welcomes are you there with the spirit of judgment are you or are you there with the spirit of welcoming people are you there judging oh this is not right this is not right this is not this is wrong that is wrong or are you there looking towards god and saying god i want to welcome people like you my dear brothers and sisters even though the pilot did not find anything wrong in him he was given the sentence of death under sheer pressure by religion that is the reason why i always say religion is the greatest opposition to the kingdom of god religion is the greatest opposition to the kingdom of god and on friday the april 3rd jesus was crucified on the cross suffered for the sins which he did not commit and on saturday april the 4th heaven held its breath and there was pin drop silence all around that area all around the country of israel the heaven didn't know what to do why because a person who did not commit any sin was killed and on april 5th the sunday god turns the grave into a garden hallelujah god turns the grave into a garden where the death couldn't hold him any longer but there was life and life of abundance i call it the passion of christ i call it the passion of christ which changed the world forever the love that the world always needed was there the peace of god that was established forever on that day welcome to this passion week hallelujah and in this week i want you to understand i want you to change your heart stop having a spirit of religion and start having a spirit of the kingdom amen stop having a spirit of judgment and start having a spirit of the kingdom of god of the holiness of god of the holy spirit where the holy spirit is no longer going to judge people but the holy spirit is going to welcome people and remember the holy spirit is the governor of the kingdom amen and let that governor prevail in your hearts today my dear brothers and sisters on this friday as we gather for the good friday to celebrate the life of jesus to celebrate the life of jesus christ my dear brothers and sisters remember it is not the tomb which was holding him but it is the life which jesus christ was giving towards you 
remember it is not the death that jesus wants but it is the life which jesus wants let us all stand on to our feet my dear brothers and sisters today i want to end this sermon with a note saying without the trials and the tribulation there is never going to be a resurrection better go through the trials and the tribulations that is when you will be resurrected with a new life with a new passion kill that spirit of religion kill that spirit of judgment have a new spirit in this week let a new spirit be born inside you so that god can start working inside you let us turn the grave into garden and let there be flowers blossoming new fruits blossoming in this week oh my dear father we thank you lord for this day a new day that you have given to us oh lord where on this day oh father we were welcoming you into our lives in the same manner oh father we want to welcome you into our lives because you are the god of our lives you are the creator of our lives you are our restorer of oh father you are a root of oh father you are a father we want to celebrate you not because of the miracles but because of who you are oh jesus my dear father as we are looking forward to have a change of heart in our lives we look forward with great passion towards you we look forward with great commitment towards you we thank you lord jesus we glorify your name as we are preparing our hearts let there be a great change in our mentality let there be a great change in our lives of oh father we thank you we glorify your name bless each and every person that has come to today of oh father and bless all the offerings that they given of oh father remembering all the great things that you have done and all the great things that you are about to do we thank you and we glorify your name in jesus mighty name we ask and pray amen